that's another day and we've got more boxes. Um, drift work stuff, it's not a drift build but they do some quite good parts. Yeah, so this stuff to me is like essential for track days. Um, it's quite small stuff, but obviously you need it. So here it all is. Uh, big stuff. You know, uh, these are the drift works. Uh, E36 and E46 uh, bucket side mounts. Um, they're pre-drilled, so you can have more than one. Um, you know, you can move the chair back. Obviously, it's fixed, but. These are quite cheap. Just a generic eBay uh, basket. Um, I do have a, a quick release, but it hasn't turned up yet. So these, this is called a stud conversion. Or in America, they're called mug studs. Um, it's a pretty simple concept. But in Europe or in the UK, um, it's quite normal. We just have a bolt that goes into the hub, um, which is fine, but when you have track days, you have to line up the holes and it's a bit of a nightmare. So, like America, they have studs and the stud goes into the hub. You can fit the wheel over the stud and then you have a nut to secure it. Um, just some thread locker to put those in. Um, some hardware for the bucket mount seats. Um, this isn't track essential, but it's quite cool to finish up the car. This is, as I said before, to get rid of the like the M logo on the uh, the mouldings, I think this will look really good. I also have a big box, um, but it's coming later, but that's a quick sneak peek. So it's pretty awful, um, but I don't mind doing interior stuff when it's raining. Um, this is how the car's sitting right now. Oh, it's got a smudge on the lens. Maybe just have to deal with it. Um, I'm looking forward to getting rid of these seats. It's a bit, I really need a car cover for this as well because it's getting a bit damp. Yeah, it's not hard to get these seats out. It's, uh, they're four 16 millimeter. Else, easy on boy of that. So yeah, the um, I think the microphone died, so I'll talk over. Don't worry, it's only for a few clips. Um, so here's the MTech three steering wheel, the not uh, the airbag one, a bit ugly. I'm probably talking about how I prefer the non airbagged one, but basically to get it off, there are two Torx screws behind it that hold the airbag on. I think they're T30. Yeah. So once the Torx bits are out, you can remove the airbag and then you just have the big uh, nut in the middle which is for um, taking actual steering uh, wheel off um, so yeah, you'll need like a breaker bar or something or some decent leverage yeah so the boss kit I got didn't actually come with a top dead uh, dot that they usually do so I put the steering wheel onto the boss and then I'm going to mount it onto the actual steering column uh, just so I can get a good idea if it's, you know, centred. And um, briefly, this is just the steering wheel hooked up directly onto the boss. Um, this quick release isn't on yet, but that'll come later. So now I think I'm going on to talk about the joys of the stud conversion. Um, it's quite a simple process. You just screw some studs into the hubs, like here, once you've got the wheels off. You put some thread locker on them and then uh, you need to torque them down with a allen key socket which i'll go on to show yeah so once they're tightened by hand and you've used thread locker you just need to use an allen key um, socket which slots into the end of the stud and do it up pretty tight so after they're 
on tightly, you actually need to tuck them down properly to spec. Um, I think 15 to 25 foot pounds is recommended. And I'm using an adapter here, so you got to compensate for a bit, but just make sure you use a proper torque wrench. And um, you'll see it. Yeah, so once they're properly torqued, you can now put the wheel on. Um, this is the main benefit of the system. Um, it took me a bit of getting used to it, but it's so much easier than doing the bolts. As you, as you can see, the the wheel just lies on it, and then you can get the nut. You can leave the wheel on and get the nut separately, rather than having to do it all at the same time. Uh, so the next part are just your open end nuts that you need for these type of bolts. Um, as you can see, there's a a, fr a socket and a thread. So again, these are 17 millimeters, and um, that's what hold it in place. Um, Again, you need to torque these down to 88 foot-pounds. That's another practical item, but it all helps. Um, I just close it. Okay, quick release. And seating options, and then obviously you need to base the seat around the wheel. So that's also useful for getting in out of the car and if you under the dash. Okay, this weather is miserable. I'm nearly giving up, but um, I got the Driftwick F86 Mountain. Sorry for the foggy screen. Um, these are so much nicer than making your own, and I think they're quite well priced, at like 60 quid. No welding. You know the holes lined straight up with the OEM mounts which is perfect. Well here are my Evo 2 Pluses, favourite seats. Um, I much prefer the, new, the older seats where you have a leg at the top rather than on the uh, back because no one can see it. Um, yeah these things are uh, fiberglass as well so they're really light. They're out of date but it doesn't matter for track days. Um, and I'm inside a stable right now it's cold. The driver's seat is a bit worse for wear obviously but you know, I can address that and keep the passenger seat nice. Um, Sabat harnesses, a three point. Um, let's get to it. This is still miserable, but um, first snag, it's bound to happen. Um, the seats are too wide for these mounts. I should have read up on the website, but um, the Driftwick ones are only meant. 40 centimeters wide mounting and these Evo 2s because they are pluses um, are about 50 centimeters and I don't want to be drilling holes and bending pre-made mounts so I have to get some different mounts. Anyway they still look good in here. Can I get around to the front? Uh, so next part of the build is um, having a look at the cooling system. Um, people say they're weak on E36s. There's some truth in that if you're, you know, buying the car uh, as a road car and never do any maintenance. But for a track car, because you normally address it anyway, I don't think they're that bad. Um, key things are on the six cylinders. You get a clutch fan. Um, I'm skeptical about mine. I think mine's had it because uh, it did overheat a bit sometimes when it was at a standstill. Um, part to look at is the water pump. Um, it's well known, but the original BMW ones had plastic impellers. All the good replacement ones have uh, metal impellers like this. Uh, this shouldn't be a hard job, especially because I'm getting the fan out. Now, for the clutch fan, you've got two options really. You can, you know, buy a OEM replacement, um, or you can wire in an electric fan. Um, I'm in two minds here. Um, I like the concept of a clutch fan because it's sort of always on. You don't have to worry about any temperature switches or turning it on with a you know button. But on the other hand, they do fail. They do rob you a little bit of power, and it's nice when you actually turn on a electric fan. You know it's on. But what I do have is on my 318 IS because of it had air conditioning and 
some funky sad if it didn't have a clutch fan. Or I don't think the four cylinders have clutch fans. I might be wrong. So I've wired it up to the battery just to check it still works. And um, I already know, but just to show you, it's got three points. I think one's a a signal, you know, t when it knows to turn on, and the other two are just positive and negative. So if we show you. <laughs> still spins quite well and so as you can see that's spinning this way but I think you can reverse the polarity if you want it to suck because that's what I think I want this one to do so that was going that way so now it should come this way and it does well, that's quite cool only issues I think I can see are um, this is quite thick. Um, it's good that it has a shroud with it, but it's quite thick. Yeah, so you get to clutch one off. This needs to come off. And then these are reverse threaded. And you can jam a screwdriver, but I'll show you a quick tool. So you have 10 pounds, you get this and this is obviously a spanner. This guy basically holds your water pump in place. It's hard to show, but once it's clamped onto the bolt, on the water pump, you get your spanner, and then it's reverse threaded, so you need to actually tighten it for it to come off or go to the right. Yeah, so with the fan off, it's actually easier to show you um, how it's done. There you, go, you can see that's sort of locked. I got the GoPro in there. Um, this is the original fan, and it's actually it's got BMW parts, so I assume this is the original one. It's never been changed. Um, so I might just get a new one. So with the fan off, um, the water pump's this top one, it's quite easy, because it's got the four bolts. Um, but I need to slacken off the serpentine bolt first. The tension is here, and the adjuster for the tension is, oh, it's really hard to show in the dark, without the belt on it. Well, that's the tensioner, but the adjuster for the tension is just above it, and it's an eight millimeter Allen or hex, whatever you want to call it. Well, that was a bit of a nightmare. Um, the tensioner socket, a hole, um, is sort of rounded, so I had to smash a T50 Torx in there. Got it to work though. And then, um, yeah, you have to turn it clockwise for it to um, loosen. And now the belt's free, so I can take off this. And before you do what I did, it's much easier to have the belt still on when you undo these spot nuts. Or well, you have to somehow grip this, but you get it. And with the pulley off, you can see the old water pump. I think it's four bolts. And then it's, you might have to give it a bit of a whack as well. Let's do it again. You can see it's moving. Yeah, you're going to get water if you didn't go in the block. Um, now, I think this one is metal. Yeah, this one is metal, so it has been done at some point, but you know, you can't tell until you actually get into it, so. Before you fit the new one, make sure it's got the O-ring, and it's a good time to clear any debris in the channel. It's obviously gonna be more than one way it can go on. Oh, okay, I got it first time. And I think you have to give it a bit of a tap for it to sit so you can get the nuts on. You sort of have to, because you don't have much room for the nuts, you sort of have to put one on, push it a bit, go to the opposite side and slip that on a bit. And then once it's down, I think it's eight foot pounds, but it's basically until it's hand tight. Don't want to break any threads here. And then just put the um, pulley back on. So yeah, that's the pulley. Um, yeah, and that's about on. It's actually quite easy. There aren't that many ways it can go on. You just have to remember to loop it around the tensioner. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, I'd, because I had so many issues with the um, tensioner socket, I did take the radiator off. It just meant I could get a hammer in there. But it does make your life a little bit easier. And these radiators are so easy to take out. So it's another miserable day. Um, 
on the 56, but I have car parts. So, I have a replacement fan clutch. And it's the 4 bolt one, you can get 3 bolt ones, but my fan has 4 bolts. So hopefully it fits and works. And just, for and just for comparison, that's new versus old. And like new, a new clutch fan. Oh, the gearing's in, the fan's the same. Let's see if it works. I just need to put the radiator back in and some coolant. So radiator's back in, um, just replace the fluid. Now, because I take stuff in and out so much, I do actually like using deionized water. Um, it's better than using normal water. And once I know the car is up and running, I would put proper BMW coolant in it, but I know for a fact this radiator is going to come out again soon, so this is sort of an in-between. And I'm going to put some antifreeze in because it's going to get cold soon. The car didn't actually start yesterday, and I'm hoping it's the battery. Um, cold weather doesn't get driven. Um, I try and start it every two weeks, but it doesn't always work. Let's try it. I'm hoping it's not a starter motor. Got fuel anyway. That was weird. Another day, some strong gales. Uh, let me just go inside the car. Maybe that's better. See, so yeah, I was trying to say another day, strong gales. Um, but the car's pretty much where I want it to be uh, for this part, um, with all the parts I have, so uh, I'll go in the engine bay in a bit, but it's got the clutch fan on, it's got the water pump, they don't seem to be leaking, well, the water pump doesn't seem to be leaking, clutch fans, I can, the airflow definitely seems a lot better now, so I'm sure that's going to help the uh, overheating at a standstill. The mirrors, I just need to finish up mounting them, I can't remember if I said, but I actually got saloon ones by mistake, um, instead of coupe. The saloon ones, the mirrors are actually the same, but the base plates are a bit different because your coupe door is obviously bigger than a saloon door, so it means you've got a different uh, size window, and therefore a different size base plate. I'm trying to find a, an, um, a rear M Sport bumper, and that's a bit tricky. Side skirts are easy to get, and you can use any side skirts um, from coupe, saloon convertible, I think compact as well. Oh yeah, the car wouldn't start, just need a new battery. Yeah, so my aim was by the end of the year to get the um, interior and exterior uh, finished, then concentrate on mechanicals, but um, I'm just waiting for parts really. Um, but And I've already started on mechanicals, if you look at this weight, like the water pump and clutch fan. And then after that, I'm going to get a clear radiator. Um, I've done research, they look pretty good. Because um, cooling is my main concern with this. This car, or this engine rather, got the tyres. Um, yeah, and then after the radiator, uh, some decent brake pads for the fronts at least. Um, I think Ferodo, I, I can't remember, DS, it's, like, it's either 2500 or 250, I can't remember. Sort of a happy in between. Um, if the rears are low, I'll just put, you know, just standard. Uh, cheap pads on the back. I don't think you go through them as heavy as the front. Then hopefully after that it'll be a bit warmer and I should be ready for a, oh my god. Uh, I should be ready for a test day. I don't want to commit to a track day and then do one lap and the car breaks. So um, I'm going to get a hard tr transporter again um, go on some private roads and then just give the car uh, like a proper shakedown. So my main concern is Engine, health, clutch, so no overheating hopefully, um, brakes, oh and before that I'll get the car aligned as well, hopefully one more, as I've showed you before, special package that's going on the car, um, I've got the part, I just don't know when I'm going to fit it, but if I might give you a clue, I need to fit it before the car gets aligned. Now, although the battery has fix the start issue, I still think the starter motor is on its way out because it takes quite a few cranks and um, it doesn't start off as quickly as it used to. 
You have to keep the key in for quite a bit, but anyway, let's try. And it feels like the start, you're fighting against the starter motor, it's a bit annoying. I can smell it burning as well. Right, a little bit of force it started, but I think it's on its way out. I can show I can smell it burning. Just to show you, switch fans all good, no leaks. Happy days. Let's see if this thing still runs. It still rolls, drives. bit stiff there. Okay, um, just wanted again to say thank you for all the subscribers. Um, I think we're on about 500 something now. Um, it's a real big help um, and I really like making these videos. So yeah, more stuff to come. The, the weather is a big factor in a lot of this in my time, but um, it'll soon pick up. Uh, the car's coming along well. Um, like I said, it's got issues, but none of them are stopping me from driving. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Um, next video, I'll uh, be doing more of the mechanical stuff that I mentioned. Um, so yeah, thank you.